Wow, it's been a pretty busy weekend. Uh, lots going on this week. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about FireEye and what's been going on there and uh, give you a little bit of update of what I've been working on and what's my plans over the Christmas holidays and uh, just really kind of catch up on the things that I'm, I'm seeing I'm doing uh, through cybersecurity and through the industry. So grab a coffee, grab a tea, and let's hack at it. I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, Auto. Auto is a Canadian-based cybersecurity company that provides 24-7 cybersecurity support and compliance service that align their customers' tolerance for risk, their clients, suppliers, and government contractual mandates. Yosato's teams focus on using insights to drive business decisions. There's no need to leave strategies to chance when insights can be used to show what changes need to be made and how to make them. Usado offers multiple services to help companies simplify IT, centralize cybersecurity management, and meet compliance standards. Usado can customize their service to work with your existing IT network and programs. For more information, contact Usado at info at uzado.com or visit their website at www.uzado.com. Okay. Wow. So how's everyone doing? Uh, I would love to hear how you're doing through the, the pandemic and everything that's going on. I know uh, for the GTA, there's a lot happening here. Uh, I think on the 21st of December, we're uh, going to have another announcement. So don't know if that's going to be, we're going to be opening up more or we're going to be locked down. So a lot of changes are happening in the, the GTA and I'm, I'm, as I'm watching the news, it's kind of happening worldwide. So Hopefully you, your family, uh, everyone around you is safe and, you know, healthy. And you guys are just kind of looking after, after each other and doing your best through the holidays to kind of take care of each other. I think it's really important right now. I know I've been changing my protocols and things that I've been doing just to kind of look after my health and increase uh, my immune system just to make sure, you know, if I get exposed or, you know, even come close to the COVID that, you know, my immune system can fight it off pretty quickly. Uh, and that means just, you know, proper eating, diet, sleeping, anything along that line. And it's important with us cybersecurity professionals. Uh, right now, it's a busy time of the year. You got, you know, Q4. Uh, there's been a lot happening in the industry, which we'll talk about today. And it just, it, you can get burnout very quickly. Uh, I was talking to a few people last week and they just, you could hear like all the, the tension, the stress and everything that's been going on. It's just a lot's been happening for any industry, all industries, uh, the one I get exposed to the most is people that are in cybersecurity and IT. And then through that, I get exposed to uh, different industries as well from like retail. That's really taking a, a big hit right now, uh, especially small to midsize uh, retailers, uh, supply chains, uh, healthcare in the sense of or just uh, cosmetics and care like that where you're going like uh, massage therapists, uh, beauty salons, uh, hair you know, salons, things like that are all been shut down here, at least in the GTA. So it's really kind of hitting them financially. So you're looking at your risk, right? Your risk tolerance, right? Being forced to shut down and not be able to make any revenue, I think is a, is a huge, huge thing, right? So I think right now, the biggest challenge that we're finding right now is how to support each other. Uh, yeah, it's how to support each other going, um, going on through the pandemic. Uh, just give me a second here. I just had a colleague just uh, text me right now. Uh, seems like one of my posts went out and uh, might have said something like uh, we're going love. Uh, give me a second here. I'm just going to fix this. But anyways, yeah, as I'm going on, just, yeah, we got to look at, you know, how to uh, protect each other and and just really kind of be safe. Give me a second here. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think it's really important right now we kind of look at all the different things, uh, all the different things going on with the industry. Uh, so let's talk about last week. Last week, uh, I don't know if you guys were able to make it out, but I had a meetup group uh, with uh, James Castell uh, from Terra Nova Defense. Uh, it was really good in the sense of we had uh, CEW there, and also we had the Toronto Police there, Kendrick from Toronto Police. I'm going to actually have him on my podcast. I'm going to work on that. <clears throat> and just talking about 
the things that's going on in the industry uh, for protecting yourself and the things that you need to look at for cybersecurity awareness, protection, uh, risk tolerance, uh, education, just everything along that line. I think it's really important that as much as we know and the baseline of cybersecurity, we always have to have reminders. We always have to keep you know it front of mind because we get busy. Things happen, right? Even the best of the best, you know, have issues. And I'm going to talk about FireEye later. And I mean, they're top of the line cybersecurity company and they got compromised, right? So even experts in the field, right, are doing their best and doing their due diligence to stay protected, to do what they have to do to protect themselves as well as their clients. And it still happens, right? It's not if, it's when. So with that mindset, you really want to make sure you're doing your best when it comes to cybersecurity and you're you know, implementing the right strategies, the right plans, you have a response plan. Uh, I know for us, we, we help clients with uh, breach readiness as a service and breach readiness plans. But then with that is, you know, you know, detect, uh, respond, and then remediate as quickly as possible, right? Before it used to be, I think it was a couple of years ago, people used to talk about we, what we want to do is we want to prevent, we want to prevent this. We want to prevent that. But now it's changed. The conversation's completely changed to, uh, uh-uh, we're not going to prevent it. We're going to detect it as, as fast as we can. We're going to respond with our team, right? Our instant response team. And they're going to remediate it as quickly as possible. So the impact is lower and it's, 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 they're trying to decrease the, the level of impact versus, you know, different companies. And I'm going to use CRA, uh, actually, actually that's probably a good one. Right, the level of impact of that with am- amount of people that got affected, and then the ongoing scams that are coming from that. I actually just got one last week where someone was calling me and saying that, and they left a message. It's a uh, recorded message now. What they're using is, "Hi, you know, you're, this is a detective from the CRA. You've got a warrant out for your arrest, and, you know, and they're telling you that you know if you don't call back, that they they're going to seize your house, your property, you know, all that you know scary stuff, and." to let you know and anyone that's new to the industry or even new to the country, right. For Canada, Canada does not have a law enforcement agent for the Canadian revenue agency, right? The law enforcement agency is separate from that. So if they're saying there's a detective from the CRA calling you, hang up, don't answer it, delete the message. Just it's a scam. Right. And I want to make sure you guys are aware of that just because again, it's just the reminders and reminders because what I'm finding is people are getting busy. They're overwhelmed. They're stressed. They're going all through this, you know, challenges right now. And what's happening is you get caught. You answer the phone. You're like, what, what, what can I do? How can I help you? And you're like, ah, you know, who is this? What is it? Okay. Yeah. Here, here's my information. Then we start giving stuff unknowing that, hold on, this is a scam. And it's because we're so busy. It's not because they're not intelligent. They're not aware. It's just, we're so busy and overwhelmed that we're answering these calls and going through that process. So I think it's really important right now for us to be mindful of that. Right. And really kind of look at, how can we protect ourselves and keep being reminded and keep having that conversation? Uh, I know one thing that we've been seeing an increase of is cybersecurity awareness training, especially like, and I've talked this again and again, and uh, Kendrick was talking about this. Uh, and if, we have the recording actually on my YouTube channel. I'll leave the link below in the description. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching us on Twitch, LinkedIn, uh, you can actually go check that out and you can actually see the YouTube video where the full, um, meetup group and discussion, the presentations are all there. So you can actually go through it. But Kendrick was talking about education, 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 awareness, awareness, being there and then looking at response. And they were talking about like um, responding back to the Toronto police and being able to do that. So a lot of great things there just to keep educating yourself, keep aware, keep your ear to the ground and making sure you're constantly aware of kind of the, the scams and the potential risks that are out there, especially when it comes over to the Christmas holidays Uh, A lot of people now since the pandemic and now, you know, over the years have been shopping more online. So make sure that you know where you're actually shopping. If you see a promo, a discount, anything along that line that, you know, is coming through, go to the actual vendor themselves, go to the retailer themselves, go to their website and then check out the promotion there. Uh, If you don't see it, call them call them directly say hey i saw this promotion i don't see it on your website is this the promotion you sent out uh validate it the only reason i'm saying that is because there's so many scams going on right now i don't want to see you or your family member get compromised and lose out on you know hundreds or even thousands of dollars i think i was reading an article 
Oh, no, it was at uh, a family members on over the weekend. And I was reading, uh, they had an, an article that it was actually someone that was writing about cybersecurity. And what they were doing was they were writing an article about it. And while they're writing the article, they actually got one of those scam emails they were talking about. And they were looking at it, they were going to click on it. And they just, because they were so busy, they kind of went, hold on a second, what is this? And fortunate, you know, they caught themselves before they clicked on it. And ha- here, what it was, and let me kind of take a step back. It was actually an update. That's what it was. He was writing an article about updates and how to be careful about updates that come through and make sure you validate that it's a valid update. If it's from Adobe, and it was, I think his was an Adobe uh, Reader update. And it came up and it popped up and he just was going to click on it. And he stopped himself and said, hold on a second here. And he read it over. And in the actual content, it was misspelled. But if, if he would have caught that, it could have been malware or something along that line that was going to be installed. But he caught it in time that he said, hold on a second here. Let me read through this. And he read through it and he actually found out that it was actually some of the content was misspelled. And he realized that this wasn't from Adobe. It wasn't an Adobe update. And now don't get me wrong. Home users and people are always trained that if there's an update, you're supposed to click on it and, and, and stay up to date and stay up to date with your software, your operating system and your patching. But always also make sure in, in your due diligence is you're confirming it's coming from that source, right? And if you're not and you're not sure, ask. Ask questions. Wait. Uh, one thing I got caught up on, uh, take your time with updates too. Uh, make sure that you do a little bit of research. Yes, it's annoying. It's time consuming. But do a little bit of research and see how that patch you know rolled out. There might be it, uh, issues with that patch or update. I found that with OBS. I updated because I ran. I use Big Sur. Um, uh, you have a MacBook Pro. I run the OS uh, Big Sur. And what happened was OBS updated, or actually, oh, I did, how did it go? I updated Big Sur, and OBS wasn't updated. So what happened was OBS wouldn't work and wouldn't launch. So I wasn't able to do my podcast and launch this, like my, my podcast or my live videos. So what happened was I was down for a week until I found out I was speaking to support and they actually went through the code and we removed certain areas. So then it would come up. Now I don't have functionality in certain areas, but now at least I can broadcast and go, go live. So that's kind of, uh, kind of an update on just patch management, cybersecurity awareness and training. Want to do a little housekeeping here. If you're on YouTube, you're on LinkedIn or you're on, um, where it's Twitch. Go to the chat. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, if you're watching this right now, uh, give me a thumbs up. You know, Just uh, comment in the message box. Just want to know anyone that's live right now. Uh, let me know how you're doing through the pandemic. Any questions that you have when, in regards to cybersecurity and what's going on. i uh, love to get some engagement going just because I think right now we need to continue these conversations and what's happening. Uh, just a lot's happening in the industry, so we need to stay aware, and especially when it's coming to the end of year. People are getting more busier, and just things are starting to happen. Ransomware attacks, you know, breaches, things along that line. So on a personal note, what am I working on? I stopped kind of talking about the things that I've been doing because I was just so busy with the cybersecurity of the CISSP and things that was going on in, the, in my job and everything along that line and sales. But I want to really kind of let you guys know what I'm working on, what am I doing, so you can kind of go along with this journey and see where you're at. So right now, uh, I've got the CISSP study group on Tuesdays. If you guys are preparing for the CISSP, want to come out, uh, want to learn more about you know, the CISSP certification and just you know study with us, or even just if there's a domain that you're working through or you haven't uh, recapped in a while, refreshed, come out. We're going through the whole, uh, all each of the domains, each of the eight domains, and we're preparing, Joel and myself, Joel Bork, uh, are preparing to write the CISSP exam. So as we're going through this, we're going through, you know, uh, domain by domain, area by area, and we're going through it as students, just learning, uh, learning with the community and really kind of understanding it and seeing how it applies to real world as we're going through our day to day. Joe's a pen tester. I'm in cybersecurity sales. So we're having two different views on how this technology, how the process, how the strategies work, and then having the discussion with the community that people are coming out and they're sharing their insights and what they do. So we have people from all different industries in there. So come out and join. It's really awesome. Uh, for, but for me, for a person, the reason why I'm doing the CISSP is I think it's so valuable to have 
this type of knowledge as you're going out and you're talking to cybersecurity professionals, cybersecurity experts, and you're having these conversations. Now, my uh, conversations are more on the top down versus bottom up. And what I mean by top down is more business conversations driving the cybersecurity forecast, the plan, the roadmap, uh, the technology for the, the the company. And then the bottom up is actual the nuts and bolts of the technology, the real you know, finite information when you're looking at scoping of uh, specification, scoping, uh, integration, like all those great conversations. And those ones I bring in subject matter experts and, and professionals that we have, that we work with to talk on the real deep technical knowledge. So having that, you know, relationship to be able to do that. Now, some areas on, on my side, because I've done technical support um, for the Ontario government and, and other companies, I have some knowledge, not as much as a lot of these experts have. I mean, not even close, but at least I can understand and, and have a conversation. And when, you know, different types of conversations come up, I'm able to at least have the conversation and understand where they're going within the direction. I think the 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 biggest thing for myself is is being able to talk on both levels. Now, if you're getting in the cybersecurity field, depending on where you are in the industry, it's good to have both sides, right? To be able to talk to high level executives, to be able to have the conversation, to have that dialogue, to understand what they're going through, to have empathy as well as strategic knowledge, but also on the the other side is to understand the technology and how it works at a high level, right? Unless you're going to be a subject matter expert, pen tester, anything along that line, or you're going to technically support the that technology, it's very hard to keep up with those technologies. And I'll use unified threat management tools, endpoint protection, SIMs, whatever that may be, is just because there's so many coming out. And it's it's always evolving, new technologies, new things are coming out. CW is a company that we're, uh, Usato, uh, Terra Nova, and CW are collaborating. And what happened is CW is coming out with a, has come, has come out with a new encryption, which is, phenomenal but again it's learning that encryption learning what they're doing learning how it implements learning how it works right and having those conversations again you're always learning you're always evolving so something to think about if you're ever thinking about going to cybersecurity, if you're a newcomer and you're ju- you're jumping into the industry it is an amazing industry it is amazingly hard industry as well and hard in the sense of you have to want to learn right you have to be uncomfortable you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I talked about this this morning with a, uh, a group of people, right? You have to be always, you know, transitioning, always changing, always learning, always evolving. I know for me right now, there's, um, I'm going through kind of a top gun sales training uh, one-on-one with uh, an expert in, in sales. And we're going through strategies, you know, scripting and, and things along that line. And that's another area where I had to be uncomfortable uh, or being comfortable, being uncomfortable with them to, to figure this out and to understand it, to listen, to apply and to now, you know, you know, reading a script and going through that as you're going through connecting and doing calls with people, seeing how that works and how it plays out, because a lot of times this stuff has to be roadmapped or um, playbooked in the sense of you have to have a a strategy that can be used from anyone in the, in the organization, the team that they can pick it up and do it versus it's unique to you. And you, you're the only one that able to do that. You want to be able to have it in a solutions uh, type strategy that if I pick it up or Fred picks up if Bob picks it up, they can pick it up and go, got it. I know what to do and I can do that. So it's really interesting. And watching how this, you know, plays out. I think the challenge for me is that learning from, you know, Tony Robbins, Chris Voss, and then looking, listen to the Sandler techniques and doing all that and bringing that all together to make it work for my temperament, my personality, and just getting uncomfortable doing that can be challenging, can be challenging. And as anyone knows, this is in sales or anything along that line, you kind of go the balance and here's, and I'll be honest with you, here's the kind of the challenge that I run into personally is that I like to be more of a consultative person how I can help, how can I work with someone, how can I provide value, what can I learn from you, how can we collaborate versus where the old sales, and I don't see this much, but there's some some kind of old guys out there where it's like the hardcore sell, 
right? You need this. I'm going to sell you a vacuum. You need this. Let me throw some dirt on the carpet. Let me do that. And with cybersecurity, it's, you know, there's a hacker in the, in the, in Russia with a hood, you know, in a dark room and he's going to get you. He's going to hack you. He's going to hack your company. He's going to take millions of dollars and your company's going to be ransomware. You need our service. You need this right now. And I get that mentality. I don't, I don't subscribe to it myself. I'm more of, I understand there's a person on the other side who's very intelligent, knows their business, looking for, you know, technology, might have done a lot of research, especially in this day and age of, you know, uh, the Gardner Report, YouTube, you know, vendors and manufacturers having tons of information where they are coming and going, I need someone I can trust. I need someone that can help me, you know, understand this technology and how it's going to work for me. I don't have time to look at this. I really don't. I need someone to advise me that that I can trust and then go through this and then guide me through how that from start to finish works from, you know, understanding the technology and the integration and how it's going to work to looking at procurement to deployment and integration to managing support after. How does that all work? Walk me through that process because I need someone to guide me because I've got 30 projects deep. I don't have time to really think about this and go through that. So that's where I love to be. That's where I love to be as that one that the people call me go, Brandon, I, I need your help. I need you to understanding and I need you to walk me through this. And I think that for me is where I, my sweet spot is because that's why I want to get the CSP. That's why I want to, you know, get that consultative more expertise is because I think that provides more value to the people that I'm talking to versus, Hey, my name's Brandon. I have uh, X you need this right now. You need to buy it now. And yeah, every company needs that. And they're like, yeah, so what? So the company I work for is amazing. Uh, and amazing in the sense of they have the same philosophy and belief is that we're there to help right across the board. doesn't matter where you are in the world. We're there to help provide guidance, provide support, walk you through our, you know, the process that you need to understand for yourself, for your business and how that, you know, the, the services, the solutions work and then guide you through that process. So I'm, I'm really loving, you know, working through Usado and doing that. And it's helping me understand the industry more. And this is a good thing is when you get hooked up to a good company, you really understand the industry more. You understand the people that you're working with. You understand the, your, the partners and clients that you're working with. You really get to build up those strong relationships because cybersecurity is a big industry, a small community. So a lot of people start to know who you are and start to connect with you. And if you're that guy that provides value and helps them, in my opinion, I think that that now shares throughout the community, through the network, that you're a trusted person that, that you know people want to connect with. So that's kind of what I've been working on. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to share. Oh, in January, I'll, I'll post in the, the description below, in the meetup group, uh, there's actually going to be another event. We're going to be talking about CMMC. Uh, James and myself, we have another colleague that's coming out that's going to be talking about CMMC, uh, which is the new uh, compliance for people that vendors that want to work with the Department of Defense and um, the military. So something you probably want to kind of keep an, up, an eye on right now, especially if you're in that industry, in that space, uh, a lot going there. We're going to have an expert out to talk about that. Just trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, that's the thing for me. Uh, that's it. I'm working on uh, encryption with CEW, uh, CSSP, consulting. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah. And I'd love to hear kind of, like I said, what you're working on. Uh, chat in the, you'll see the chat boxes on YouTube or on uh, Facebook. I'm just here looking at LinkedIn. Any of them, let, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. Um, so let's get into the news. I really want to talk about what's going on in the news and give you guys some updates. So I don't know if you guys have been seeing this and I'm going to bring it over here. Give me a second here. I'm just going to bring this up here. But there's a lot going on in the news. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been seeing kind of FireEye and things are happening there. Uh, yeah, right now this is kind of OBS is giving me a little bit of problems here. So I'm going to bring this up here, and you're going to see that you know FireEye was was compromised, and I'm just going to bring up the news here. 
Uh, best one to start with is a CyberWire daily briefing uh, for 12, 14, 20. This was a really good article. I'm going to have the links to it uh, below. Uh, well, well, we'll be briefed on the, the prediction today since the supply chain uh, uh, attack Cozy Bear executed through Solar Winds RN platform uh, rightly dom uh, dominated today's news. So when you read this article, what they're going to be going through is what happened? They're going to talk about you know uh, the APT29 group uh, and a known un a unit of the Russian SVR Foreign Intelligence Service appeared to have been behind not only the FireEye breach but attacked on, on the attacks on the U.S. Department of Commerce and the Treasury as well. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reports Cozy Bear earned uh, a, rep a reputation during an operation against U.S. campaigns in 2015-2016 for being quieter and less obtrusive than its uh, GRU cousin Fancy Bear. The Washington Post, Ellen uh, Nakasima, broke the story over Twitter late yesterday afternoon uh, and the followed up with the article that said that the organization were successfully breached through their network and management system of a very widely and widely used solar winds product. If indeed the, that proves to be the case, the problem is likely to become Wide, uh, very widely uh, widespread uh, solar winds customers include large corporations, government agencies, and military services. But even if so, as uh, Malware Lake tweets, it, it's it needs not involve a vulnerability of the solar wind itself. And then then it goes through and it talks about a little bit more. So something that to look at for this article and looking at how how this is kind of playing out, you're really looking at how companies right now are even at the high level of cybersecurity FireEye are vulnerable to compromises and they are, they're doing their best right now. And I talked about this earlier. They're doing their best. They're doing their due diligence to make sure that they're secure and responding as quickly as possible. Now, another article, I'm just going to bring this up here. Uh, give me a second here. And it says the ABT group aren't all from Russia, China, and North Korea. Uh, this was from ZNet. It was uh, written by Kalen uh, Kapini uh, for Zero Days. Uh, hackers believed to be operating on behalf of foreign governments have breached software providers, solar winds, and then uh, deployed a malware-laced update for its Orion software to infect the networks of multiple U.S. companies, uh, companies and government networks. Uh, U.S. security firm uh, FireEye said today, FireEye reports comes after Reuter and the Washington Post and Wall Street Journal reported on Sunday intrusions at the U.S. Treasury Department of the U.S. Department of Commerce, National De Telecommunication and Information Administration, uh, NTIA. So the solar wind supply chain attack is also how hackers gain access to FireEye's own network, which the company disclosed earlier this week. The Washington Post cited sources claiming that the multiple uh, multiple other government agencies were also impacted. So, and then it goes through the article and you kind of read there and I'm going to have the post there. But what you're going to see here is they're going to talk about what happened and, you know, how it's been compromised all through. And I think it's really important to really understand that when you're collaborating with different companies, that there's a lot of different access points that people can compromise, right? When you're looking at FireEye, you're looking at the Solar Winds application, you're looking at their software updates, and the, and I knew this when I was developing websites when I had a marketing company. If you ever had third-party plugins or th things along that line, you always had to be careful because those plugins could be developed by a third-party uh, consultant or contractor that's developing for that company they might not have direct access or pen testing in place to evaluate the code and evaluate what's going on. So as you're going through the chain of company to consultant to software, there can be areas where now things are dropped off when it comes to security because when we go back to CIA, confidentiality, data, integrity, and availability, the availability of the application is very important for most companies. They want to make sure it's accessible, it works well, there's no downtime that, you know, clients can use it and they have a good dashboard that it, it, you know, does all the features and functions that people are looking for. And then the integrity, you know, bigger companies try to do their best to do the integrity of the evaluating the code, evaluating the application. 
But sometimes because it's third party, right, and then there's a layer deep or even a, a fourth layer deep, some of that is not reviewed, right? And it reviewed, and let me clarify, some is not reviewed as detailed as it should be, right? Because it's time consuming. It, it costs money. It costs resources to be able to do that. So what happens is as they're, do, as they're not doing that, there could be gaps and they think, okay, well, that guy, you know, we've always had him as a consultant and he's wrote code for us before. Then, yeah, it should be fine. And then what happens is they're trying to rush to get deadlines, launch times, uh, you know, marketing, finances, all on, on top of them kind of saying, let's do this. You know, we need to get it out by a certain date. And they're pushing the product. They're pushing the software. They're pushing the update. And so they push it out. And then what happens is potentially there's vulnerabilities. There's things that could happen right? and things that be compromised. And as they go through that and then they launch it and then things like this happen. So it's a very delicate industry, very challenging right, to say the least. And I think it's important right now for companies to do their due diligence, right, to evaluate their systems, evaluate things. Because now, and this is just my opinion, you look at FireEye and how many clients they had that now were compromised because of this, that they potentially might have uh, solutions with. Now, now are questioning, should they be working with FireEye? You know, should we work with another partner, another vendor? Because you left us open for a breach. You left us open for a compromise. Is it FireEye direct? Is Was it them specifically? I mean, this is what the articles are saying. It's, you know, solar wind and the updates and the patches and all that. But again, the responsibility lies back on the people that you're working with, right? The vendors and partners that you, you work with because you trust them that while I work with you, you are doing your due diligence doing that. And I think that's where it's so hard when it comes to technology right across the board, IT, cybersecurity, is things are always evolving, that it's this constant catch-up game. Technology evolves. We have to make sure it meets certain criteria, and we're, we're evaluating, and we're testing it, and we're making sure it's secure. And then there's another update, and then we keep going through this process. We keep going through this. So I think it's, you know, in my opinion, I think it's really hard for companies like FireEye and SolarWinds and all that to maintain that and stay profitable because they don't want to hold up their profitability and their revenue models because they're trying to make the perfect software and they make the perfect software, the perfect patch. And then something changes, hardware changes, software changes, and they have to do it again. They have to make their updates and they keep doing it. And so they'll, you know, as we know, potentially never, they'll never get out the perfect software because there's so many variables to maintain and manage to make sure that that's happening. So a lot going on there uh, with the news and kind of fire. Eye. And I wanted to cover that a little bit. I'd love to hear what, kind of what you think about that and what you think about the FireEye uh, breach and, and and what was it, the Cozy Bear. And I'm going to read over a little bit of the Cozy Bear here. Uh, give me a second here. I'll bring that up. So I was just briefly reading over it just to kind of learn a little, a little bit more about it. And the resource to Wikipedia, which I'll, I'll have in the, the show notes and uh, the description below, uh, Cozy Bear classify as an advanced persistent threat. ABT 29 is a Russian hacker group believed to be associated with one or more intelligent agencies of Russia. The Dutch General uh, Intelligence Security Services deducted from security camera footage that it, it is led by the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, SVR. Cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike also previously suggested that it may be associated with either the Russian Federal Security Services, FSB, or SVR. The group was given other nicknames by other cybersecurity firms, including Office Monkey, Cozy Bear, The Dukes, uh, and The Cozy Dukes. And then the methodology, Persky's lab determined that the, that the earliest sample of the Mini Duke malware attribute to the group dates uh, from 2008. The original code was written in assembly language. Semantic believes the Cozy Bear has been compromised uh, diplomatic organization and government since at least uh, 2010 the cozy duke malware utilities oh sorry the cozy bear malware utilizes a backdoor and a, and a, a drooper uh give me a second, and a dropper uh the malware extra uh, extra exfil <laughs> can't say this is a tongue twister the malware exfil exfil exfiltrates exfiltrates data to the command and the control server attacks Attackers may tailor the malware to the environment. Uh, the backdoor components of Cozy Bear malware are up to date, 
or updated over the time with modifications to crypto, crypto, uh, cryptography, Trojan functionality, and anti-detection. Uh, the speed at which Cozy Bear develops and deploys in its components is remnants of the tool set of Fancy Bear, which also uses the tools, uh, chopsticks, and core shells. So take a look at that. I'm going to post that in the show notes as well. Uh, it's really interesting to kind of see the methodology and the, the I guess that really the methodology and the techniques, and it talks about this, the technical capabilities that people go through to do these compromises. And they're building on and building on and building on, right? It's not just they write one and they've gone. They're building on the previous ones to make it better, make it faster. So it's always hard when you look at the other side of the coin is uh, the guys on the blue team that are protecting the companies. They're working even more harder because they, and here's, here's something that I've always found kind of fascinating. Hackers, you know, guys that are doing malicious, you know, compromises, things along that line, don't have any rules and regulations. They're basically free to do whatever they want, when they want, and how they want. When on the other side, the blue team, they have rules and regulations and they have change management and things that they have to abide by. And it's almost like them protecting companies with one hand tied behind their back. And it makes it harder, you know, and this is just my opinion, for the blue team to be able to do their due diligence and their work because they're always, you know, fighting against, you know, different, you know, change management, different policies, different compliance that they have to uh, manage while they're trying to protect organizations, and they're trying to protect companies, governments, and things along that line. So it's a really interesting industry to, to be in, to really kind of look at that and see the challenge of that. So that's just a brief update of going, what's going on in the news. Uh, just want to give you that update and just See what you guys think about that. I know there's a lot going on when it comes to FireEye and the different types of compromises, but it's, it's just you know interesting to look at how different companies are looking at you know taking advantage or how different hackers are looking at taking advantage of different areas of technology, different you know applications, different hardware, different you know people. They're looking at how they can compromise. And you look at the pandemic. You look at you know people the increase of ransomware to and malware and phishing attacks on individuals increased like drastically because they knew that the systems weren't there to protect them they knew that the monitoring tools the security uh tools that we use to protect you know endpoints from malware i'm just trying to think of different things like endpoints and you know firewalls and all that were all circumvented because now people were at home Right, they're at home and they're on their home networks and doing that. So now they're like got direct access to these people and they're going straight at them, right? Hopefully to compromise them and get get you know either some malware under their system so they can get direct access to the computer or ransomware, anything along that line. So it's pretty crazy, like all the things that were have been going on and how this pandemic has really shine uh, shine a light on the different challenges that we've had in the industry and things that were going on with, you know different types of programs, roadmaps, uh, companies that were looking at going to the cloud and had to do it overnight. Like a lot of this stuff happened just so quickly. And it was, I think it's so important for us to understand that this is where we need to work as a team, a collaborative team to help each other, right? We're not on an island on our own. We're really kind of looking at, you know, different types of solution providers, risk management, uh, vendors, you name it, all looking out to protect each other and really help each other stay safe with the cybersecurity. So I'm going to end there because there I covered a lot of information. Uh, again, if there's anything, uh, if there's anything that you guys need, uh, you guys want to chat, uh, anything you guys need help with, let me know. There's just so much going on in the industry right now, especially around the holidays. First and foremost, take care of yourself, take care of your family. Uh, and then look at the all the other things that you're doing and you're working on. It's just so important to do that first and, and just make sure you're healthy and you're safe. And keep growing, keep learning about cybersecurity, keep you know protecting yourself and your business and you know, the people around you. So I want to leave off there. Don't forget, software is hackable, being connected is vulnerable. I'll see you next Daily Cyber. <laughs>